Welcome to the Carr and Seguin Show, hosted by Devin Carr and Paul Seguin, where two Michiganders dive into real estate, outdoors, community building, and everything in between. Well, welcome to another episode. We are on episode 103. Three. Mm-hmm. Three. Mm-hmm. Three. 103. I'll take a nice temp day of 103 right now. I'd love to be just soaking in some so heat. Hot. I would about 60. 60 would be nice. I complain about that. 103. That'd be just a scorcher, man. That would be. That's that's the dog days of summer right there. But here, us in uh, Michigan or maybe Midwest, it's, it usually means a really... Humid day mm-hmm. where it is just oh, yeah. sticky and nasty. <laughs> uh, no, you don't leave your house. Yeah, I, I hear the people in the cellar. Oh, we're a hundred all the time. Yeah, but it's dry hundred. There's a difference. There's a difference, people. There's a difference. Come up here and you're like, feel like you're just gasping for air, right? Because it's so thick with well, moisture. It's like, <laughs> then you step outside and you're sweating and it's just, bleh. <laughs> but. No, I'm ready. I'm ready, dude. I am mm-hmm. I am over this winter. This is where we all start to get a little crazy. Ain't that the truth? You ready? Dude. Got St. Patty's Day. Which usually is like a good indicator of like warm weather to come, but freaking supposed to be like 35 degrees. Right. That sucks. Well, what sucks is that it's on Friday. Is it? Yeah, it's Friday. What's wrong with that? Because you're supposed to have corned beef. And it's Friday. Oh, now I have to sit and watch everybody else eat meat eat fish. Play wow, fish. I never thought of that. That's terrible. I never thought. Yeah. I, all it's I like thought my worst was, nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought that what a great time for all the drunks to be able to have to get up on Saturday. Well, <laughs> I know. Well, that's what I was <laughs> probably thinking too. But it just have it on Thursday or Friday or Saturday. Well, I know, but still. We got it. We got some yesterday. Jess and I went to uh, the Detroit Corn Beef Company or oh, whatever, whatever it's called. Huh? Wrigley's? Wrigley's? No, it's right there over in Plymouth. Um, oh, I thought you meant in Detroit. No, is that is Wrigley's an own place? Yeah. For corned beef? Detroit Ham and Corned Beef Company. Ooh. You ever heard of them? I have not. No? There's a store uh, in Plymouth there, and uh, it was good. The Corned Beef Deluxe Sandwich. <sighs> corned Beef Coleslaw. The, the like, what the is it a thousand island typically they put mm-hmm. on there for the um Reuben? Is it let's just pull it? Is up. it a Reuben? No, it's corned beef. Well, right Reuben's here. are corned beef. Corn, don't talk to me like that. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> making me look stupid. I'm getting here. out of my lane. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, the corned beef deluxe, it's uh. Obviously, corned beef with Swiss coleslaw and Russian dressing on rye. I don't know. So it's like a Rachel. What's a Rachel? Where they have coleslaw instead of sauerkraut. Yeah, that's what I like. Yeah, is that what it's, is that what it's normally called? I've heard. I've heard it a called Rachel. A Rachel. A Rachel? Wow. Why? Why did it get called Rachel? What's the story behind Rachel? I'm guessing there was a girl named Rachel. There was a girl named Rachel. Right. It's always go always comes back to like a girl, right? Sauerkraut. <laughs> so she put coleslaw on her Reuben, and it was delicious. And now we have a new sandwich <laughs> called the Corn Beef Deluxe for right. eleven ninety nine. I saw on the news this morning that they were talking about Michi or I think the U.S. super high in salt intake. And sandwiches were the leading cause. Oh, I believe it, man. Well, yeah, everything's cured. Right. Yeah. (laughs) It's all soaked in salt. Preserves. But it was delicious. It was good. Corned beef was good. Yeah. It is just like, I mean, it's good thickness too, man. Like, Mm -hmm. it's just a good thick sandwich. Not like a few pieces. No, dude. I mean. Then they load the coleslaw up with your two pieces of meat. No, we've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. Like, to me... If it's not falling apart, it's not a sandwich. Right. 
because it it's got to be big then, right? You know, it's like the same thing <laughs> like a burger. Like I want a just a messy. When I'm taking a bite, it's just it's just dripping. You know, <laughs> I know some people are like oh that sounds great. No, like that means it's just got it's thick of mm-hmm. substance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but no, yeah, it was uh, corned beef. I mean, it was like when she when I I'm like dang that's a good size sandwich. And that's that just good. Thick, yeah, thick of corned beef. Coleslaw was like a good chunk. It was delicious. Yeah, she got it. I think we got it yesterday. Yeah. Dude, my days are all <laughs> Jeez, it was like yes, yesterday, 5 o'clock. Less than 24 hours ago, April. Uh, but no, it was good. It was Joy good. Ham and Corned Beef Company. Right over there in Five Mile. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Check it out. Yeah. So you just have to get yours Thursday. Or Saturday. I know. You, you, get, you have a spot for fish that you guys go to regularly, or do you mix it up? We went to... Uh, or do you just cook last, at home? Two Fridays ago, we went to Hell Saloon. That was really good. Hell Saloon? Yep. In Hell? Mm-hmm. You made it back. Yep. Good yeah. job, buddy. They had perch, <laughs> perch and bluegill is what we had. Ooh, that did you get good. the perch? Or did you get both? We got bluegill. Yeah? And then, yes, last Friday, we, we cooked our own. Did you? Mm-hmm. Went to the freezer? Yep. Nice. What did you cook? Walleye. Walleye. Oh, that's the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but bluegill oh. is a delicious little fish. Ah, oh, yeah. Oh, they God. are. I love it. Bluegill. Yeah, there ain't nothing wrong with bluegill. Don't get me wrong. But walleye. It was good. It was the best. It was good. I mean, if you give me a platter of walleye, panfish, which are bluegill, pike, I take walleye all day. Perch. Even perch. perch. Even perch. I will take walleye over perch. If I had to rate, though, here, you rate yours. My rating would be this. If it, if you had a platter of walleye, perch, bluegill, pike, I would probably go walleye, perch, bluegill, pike. What would be that? See, I don't know. Just because it's like, like when I had bluegill last, a couple weekends ago, that was the first time I've had bluegill in a while. It's not like something you see on the menu. Most of the time, no. it's cod or something. One hundred percent, yeah. So, most, I would say, ninety nine percent of all fish that you're buying at a restaurant or locally around here is pike cod. And been a while since I've had perch, but I would put pike at the bottom. I'd probably put walleye first, just because I haven't really had perch that much perch or bluegill. No, you haven't had that much perch, dude. I, I mean, they're the same freaking family fish. Right. I don't know. There's just something about those bigger fillets that you're typically going to get with walleye. Mm-hmm. You know, perch, you can get some jumbo perch, good size right. chunks of fillets, no doubt, but. Definitely get more meat <sighs> yeah. with a walleye. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's just, that's a good, that's a good fish, man. So are you guys both classifying pike at the bottom because of the taste or because of, I don't, uh, I don't fish, or is it because of all the bone? They're bony, and I know that's why a lot of people don't like to catch them. Because they just don't want to deal mm-hmm. with the bones, but at the same time, like who freaking cares? They're still great cut of fish. Yeah, I mean you can. I probably I have probably ate more pike than any of them, to be honest. It's just when you get those walleye and those perch or pan man, they're just so much better. They are delicious. Yeah, yeah. Pike or bony? I mean, you just gotta you just, just run your get, yeah. You get your you just flay them where you don't get the bones. Yeah, and you may still get a couple, but just freaking remove them. Right. And who, I mean, I just hate to do it. Whenever we get fish, she's always so, like, she can't get it out of her head. She's like, she's just waiting for the bone, bone. bite. The bone bite. She says, I'm going to bite a bone. I'm going to get a bone. And you're not. I will. <laughs> I'm like, because you're thinking of it. Right, yeah. You're... <laughs> um, but, no. Oh, now you got me all just hungry for some fish now. It's well, nice. yeah, because you already had your corned beef. Some beer battered fish, baby. You ever go to that place off M36 that... Yeah, the Sportsman Club. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we went there last year. I think was it good? Yeah, it wasn't bad. Were it they, was it was inexpensive for how much food you got. Were they still doing like the the takeout kind of style, or was it finally you can eat there, or is it always like that for them? I think it's been like that for a while. The drive, the drive kind of through thing. Yeah, because they get so many people. Right, and it's not that big of a a joint to. Yeah, but I think you can park. And just eat I mean, there. I think there were people eating there last time we went. Yeah. But. I want to try it. I drive by it all the time, and I always see their. 
It's packed. Yeah, the advertising for the fish. No, we went to Salem. I think the last time we were here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was it. Was good. Was it? Yeah, it was not bad. Um, the the only the, I will say to be honest, their their cuts were just a little too, like round like big mm-hmm. i know it sounds funny like you want big but it, it was just like that i think they just overdid it with too much batter oh, okay like i want fish mm-hmm. i want batter too but i don't want a big chunk of batter right like, yeah You're well, i want to batter yeah i want i want some i just want a good portion of fish right not a ton of batter but no it was, they were good though i think it was actually it wasn't cod it was something else they ordered i don't think it was perch or anything. pollock maybe Alex and our big one. Yeah. But it was good. It was good. Let's go to this Friday. How about whitefish? Whitefish is good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I know that's a pretty big popular fish. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah you see it more. Sold-wise, not people cook, not people catching them, but more people eating them. Baked and broiled. Right. right. Not so much fried or smoked in a dip. Like Costco's got that smoked whitefish dip. It's pretty good. Yeah, it was just, I don't know, I got a weird text. <laughs> um, yeah, white, white fish is too, but I, I agree. Like, I don't think I don't, you don't see it too much as like a, a beer fry, battered. No. Yeah. Typical fish fry kind of fish. But you know, you know, a good place that we try to go to every time we go up north is uh, Scallywags. Mm. You ever heard of them? Yeah, I think. Up in Mackinac about, City. Yeah. Yeah, they uh they used to have a, a a place in Traverse City, but they closed that one down for whatever reason. But the Mackinac City one, right in downtown Mackinac City, just so like I've even talked to the owner because we go there so much. Um, whenever they were there, but they catch all of their fish fresh because mm-hmm. they they sell a ton too. It's but it's just all one hundred percent fish right from the bay uh, or Green Bay, so it's okay. all fish. All their fish is one hundred percent right out of the Great Lakes. But- Want complete, not it's not ordered through like you know, not to say that they're bad, but like it's not like a Gordon food right, or a yeah. Cisco kind of ordered fish. It's yeah. all one hundred percent bought right from the guys who are out in yeah who are caught it right out in the in the Great Lakes water. It just makes a difference, man. It's fresh, dude. It's fresh. Not to say that they're not bad, but I mean you're cutting out that hold time, right? Because, you know, you know, they're buying it from those same guys, too. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and then it's going there to the store. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, no, it's just good. Scallywags, shout out to them. If you're if you're looking for some good fish and you're passing through Mackinac City or going over the bridge, take a quick little stop. Get on that. Get off that last exit for the bridge. Go right downtown. It's tucked back in the plaza. Scallywigs, you will you will not be disappointed. Very very good fish. But they got walleye, perch. Uh, I think they ha- might even have the white fish. But it's always walleye and perch for sure. And he did. I remember asking him. He's like, we sell more walleye than anything. Really? Yeah. Year over year, they always sell more walleye. Before we roll into so the topic of today, I'm gonna keep you guys on a little cliffhanger here because I got one more other thing to to pick on. Devin doesn't know about this yet. Yay. (laughs) But before we get into, we're going to go over, like we said, the last two shows. We did Brighton. Uh, We went over Brighton stats. Mm -hmm. We went over South Lion stats. Uh, We now, I know the last show when we did in 102 was South Lion, and we had uh, February's data. I remember when we were doing it, like, oh, February's up now, before we printed it and we sent it to... Uh, to Johnny for the uh, uh, put the pictures up. So now we actually have February's data. But today's episode, we're going to do Livonia, my hometown. Whoop, whoop, whoop L-Town. Whoop. Uh, the oldest person, uh, average age town in, in Metro Detroit. Really? <laughs> no, I made that. Oh, up. I was going to say, I did not know that. <laughs> Dude, nobody ever moves out of Livonia. <laughs> and honestly, honest to God, I know that's it's been a problem for them recently with the enrollment for their schools over the last decade. There's enough kids because no one leaves. Ah. I'm I'm not even kidding. I I'm really good friends with one of the former uh, athletic directors at Franklin. And (laughs) I remember saying all the time, like, dude, yeah, we're we're anticipating another 10% drop in attendance this year. Yeah. Cause no one leaves. No one moves out. 
once the kids go through and then you're still living there, well, well, guess what? There ain't no more kids coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, their attendance is, I think, over the last decade are like way down. Does, uh, does Livonia have multiple high schools? Three. Three. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Livonia is it's fairly a big city, and they are a perfect box. Yeah. <laughs> their their border outlines is a perfect box, which does not happen that often uh, for cities. Uh, there's usually always like, you know, depending on main roads or being the split for between cities. But, yeah, Livonia is a perfect, like, square um, I don't remember if I'm correct, but I think it's like, I think it's 10 square miles each way, or is it eight? It's like eight miles. It's like perfectly square. Anyways, uh, but yeah, they have three high schools. Uh, there is Livonia Franklin, which is, uh, kind of your Southeast section of Livonia. The, the, the breakdown of schooling is weird. Um, being that there's three and you have a complete square. Uh, and then Churchill, Churchill is the southwest side of Livonia, and then Stevenson's pretty much the whole north, and it kind of dips down on the east side uh, a little bit. But that's kind of how they all break up. I know for talks when I was in middle school, uh, I think just getting into the high school, they were talking about trying to become because there used to be old Bentley High School, which was empty and vacant for a long time. Okay, we used to play many basketball games there because uh, they have a pretty good big size court. But the whole talks was to create one mega high school, like kind of like the park in Canton mm-hmm. did. Um, but that never happened, and then they built the Livonia Rec Center. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I remember when it was huge talks. I mean, they did a huge vote in the city for it. I mean, I was all for it because, dude, Livonia would have became a freaking powerhouse. Well, yeah. For sports, added, man. If you added them all together. Because Stevenson is usually pretty dang good in sports. I mean, Livo- North Livonia is a little more higher income area, mm-hmm. a little more rittier, money, money, right? I mean, let's just face it. The true facts is you're... There's a reason why CC is pretty dang dominant. <laughs> uh, it's not just because they're a Nova. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, you join you join three high schools, that would be some solid talent. Oh, yeah. To pick from, to, to build your varsity teams. So, but anyways, it never happened. Uh, so, we'll get to that. But real quick, uh, uh, I have a bone to pick that is just irritating the heck out of me. I don't know if, did you hear the news just recently? What the USGA and the RA decided to do about the elite players in the golf balls? You know, I did see, it's funny you say that, because late last night I saw an article pop up, and it was about the golf balls. I didn't read it all, but, stupid. I, but, but I, then after once I paused on that one, then Frickin it stupid. was one article after another. So, it's the dumbest thing ever. So apparently they're... Making them dumb down the balls? So, to yeah, 100%. All it is, the USGA and the RNA rolled out a proposed plan. But let's just be real. A proposed plan has always gone into effect. Okay. So, as much as they try to paint it as that they want to, uh, they're seeking, you know, manufacturer's advice and right. wisdom in it. And this technically isn't supposed to go into effect till 2026. So there's still three years Uh of this planning, but everyone's calling their stupid bluff. This isn't a proposal. It's going to happen. Right. Right. I heard Titleist was all upset. Everybody. Everybody is. The players are all, I mean, there's a mixed bag, of course, like everything, but at the same time you have, it's just the stupidest thing ever. So what do they, what do they want to do? They want to roll back the balls that the professional athletes, the professionals can use. Here's the thing. What does it mean by roll back? So, the last 10 to 15 years, I would say, our game of golf has exploded around one word. Distance. Yeah. Right? The length of golf courses continue to get longer. Why? Because your your touring pros are just hitting the ball consistently farther. Right. But kind of almost like we're talking about here when we're talking about the facts of real estate, 
mm-hmm. and really what the truth is. Right. When you really break down the data of distance, the tour average has only increased by one yard over the last 10 years. Oh, really? But there's this huge hype that they're just hitting the ball too far. So what they want to do is they want to pull back the ball. They want to make it less distance. And you can do that through the core, through the mm-hmm. the molding of the ball, and, and really just the technology. Right. Like you can restrict the flight, and that's what they want to do. They want to bring it back. And I agree 100%. Justin, there's been a few interviews. No, it was Webb Simpson, Webb Simpson and Justin Thomas both came out and said, like, exactly like, one, I'm 100% in agreement with what they said. One, Webb is like, Here's the thing. The USGA missed the boat. Like, if they wanted to control this distance thing that right. has come over the years, that ship's already sailed. You've already got golf courses over the last 10 years that are now pushing 7,700 yards in, in distance from the tips. Right. Right? Which is just stupid amount of distance. Mm-hmm. But then you also have... The game of golf professionally has evolved with that. Right. These guys are becoming more athletic. They're they're finding ways to just plummet that golf ball down the fairway. Right. I mean, look at Bryson DeChambeau. Like the dude is like a scientist uh, all around the data. Mm-hmm. And then you just apply the data to the golf balls. So they want to try to control the professionals. And this ruling is only to the professionals. So the amateurs Mm -hmm, out there mm -hmm. still can use all of these normal balls. But when it comes to the pros, and and there's talks, there's talks of like, is it just limited to to the majors, where then they have to play these specific balls in the major. But then Justin's like, like, don't be stupid. We're just going to figure out how to tweak our clubs right. differently to still hit the ball farther. The manufacturers are going to come to us and say, yeah, well, we still want to hit those distances. So how do we can, how can we figure this out with the equipment? Right. Now that they're drawing our balls back. Right. So, um, the thing that bugs me the most, and you'll hear it from a lot of people that talk have obviously started making, cause this came out on Monday mm-hmm. and, um, Golf is the one sport that guys like me and you or everybody who plays golf can play the same golf ball, can say the can play the same clubs, yep, and can play the same golf courses for the most part as the pros do. Can you go walk onto Madison Square Gardens and play a basketball game on that court? Probably no. Not. Can you just go Walk into uh, freaking jo- Little Caesars Arena. I was going to say Joe Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> and go play a hockey game with your buddies? No. Golf is the only sport where there is no distinction or separation between amateurs and pros. Mm-hmm. And that's a lot of where the love for this game comes up. Right. That I can go out there and play that same TPC Sawgrass that these guys just played on. Sure, I have to go pay like 500 bucks. But, but I can go it. play it. Right. And I can go play the Island Green just as they do. Right. From the same tees if I wanted to. Which would be silly. I mean, that'd be fine. I'd like to be a little closer. Yeah, one of the <laughs> things that with that it would suck too is you compare yourself saying, oh yeah, he, that pro can only hit it 300 yards. I'm hitting it 300 yards. Right? 100%. Because how much of, when they're saying dial back the ball, how much, 10%, 5%? Is there a... So, yeah. Is there a number they're trying to get it back by? Yeah, so they're in their proposal, they they want conditions to, they want to try to restrict the ball head speed uh, to 127 and 37, which just gets all like technical in the yeah. golf ball yeah. stuff. They want to restrict the ball speed and the revolutions per second and the launch angles to 11 degrees. Like they, they want to just bring them down to like a max area. And the one thing that I agree with Webb Simpson said is, hey, sure, you guys have realized that you've let this go. Because I agree, if this continues 10, 15 years down the road this, with this with no control of this kind of distance thing, right. then sure, we might be seeing golf courses that are 9,000 yards. 
because guys are now going to start hitting it 400 yards on the tour. Right. So, like, it makes sense what you're attempting to do. But to do it by just restricting the pros by a golf ball is dumb. Yeah. Because now you're just separating the pros from the amateurs. Right. Now there's a separation in the game. Um, so hold on a second, Paul. So in layman's terms, right, since you're a big golfer and you know a lot about golf balls and speeds and all this stuff, me and Devin don't. If a guy is consistently don't throw hitting, me in there with you. If a guy's <laughs> sorry about that. He's good too. If a guy's if a guy's trying to is consistently throwing out a three hundred yard drive, what is that guy going to get with this new ball? So they're they're saying what it's going to do overall is it's it's going to uh, take off roughly fourteen to fifteen yards on the pros drive. Oh, so it's a significant amount of yeah, yeah distance. Yeah. So like the tour average driving distance right now is 300. So they want to bring it down to like 284. But what's some of the points that I picked up that I really honed in on and agreed with is like Webb Simpson said, hey, we a lot of the guys here in the tour agree with this because we've talked about this forever, is that you want to make, you want to hone in this distance thing, then do like what Pete Dye did. So just this past week, well, whenever this drops, the Players' Championship, is that TPC of Sawgrass? Mm-hmm. Okay, that is not a long course at all. When it comes to even just the PJ Tour standards, it's only like seven seventy hundred yards. It's okay. not long. These guys typically are playing courses that are like seventy four, seventy five nowadays mm-hmm. for distance. There's two holes on that course from the tips that are three ninety and three ninety eight. Very short par fours, mm-hmm. considering that typical. PJ Tour par fours are like 425 to 450. Okay. Those two holes played the highest in over par average for the whole weekend. The whole week. Hmm. They averaged 4.25 and 4.18 for the whole weekend, meaning they averaged over par scores. Why? Because Pete Dye designed the hole to be difficult. Right. So what Webb Simpson is saying is like, dude, You want to try to make this game bring in their distance? Then make tell these course designers to change up holes. Right. Stop making holes where there's 70-yard wide fairways. Bring them in. Right. Make the rough harder. Like, that's overnight is going to make it difficult. Versus a a driver. Well, why'd you see, what's his name? Uh, Lee Kim hitting irons off the tee all the time. Because he knew it was important to be in the fairway, not in the rough. And that guy's a long hitter, mm-hmm. you know, like, so like, I completely agree with that. And then, you know, Justin Thomas just really talked a lot about like, just the distinction, like our sport has no separation technically mm-hmm. from what the pros are using and doing and playing to where the amateurs are. Right. And that's where there's that cool connection. Just like you said, Johnny, like, well, I, I mean, Justin Thomas drives at 300. So do I. And he technically isn't using anything different than I am. Sure, there might be. <coughs> He's got fitted clubs or whatever. Yeah, I mean, to an extent. And, they, you know, I think they all kind of march in like, sure, is our clubs a little more. They're no different from the manufacturer. It's right. just we, they critique it right. completely yeah. to them, which normally an amateur isn't going to go do that, right? Right. But at the end of the day, it's still a tailor-made driver right, yeah. and you're, he's hitting a tailor-made driver. Right. So I, I just don't see how it's good for the game of golf. And this is how they're trying to spin it. Mm-hmm. I just think it's, it's stupid. I see no reason uh, to do it. It's just, um, and I think I love how Justin Tom and JT is just so like no filter. And he's like, I'll be honest, like lat, the, some of the, well, the last couple of things the USGA has made changes are just, have just been stupid. <clears throat> and and they make it, they spin it to be like it's to advance the game, but they're not. Right. And 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 it's true. I mean, it's just, I, I just don't know where they're getting it from. And I think it's a, a huge mistake if they do this. And then everyone, everyone's saying like, well, it's it's not a matter if, it, they it's will. But, you you know, hopefully with enough input from the players and the manufacturers, combined i don't know hopefully they don't do it as so would you as see de- like as much of a degree as what they're proposing today so would you see like live following suit and doing the same exact thing 
all of those guys doing it? Because then it even becomes a bigger question of how do you know who has the best golfers? The live guys can drive at 300. The PGA guys can only drive at 270. Yeah, yeah. So right now, so that's a, that's a very good question because right now Liv is are trying to argue for world golf ranking points because uh, right now they're not like a sanctioned right. tour yet, really. So they're not getting points, and everyone who's joined them is just like just plummeting on the world golf rankings. Um, so, yeah, I think they're – they're probably obviously very. I mean, I know Bryson. A lot of the, a lot of the guys. Uh, I mean, I follow them all on Instagram. And, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't think I've. Besides some of the people that Golf Channel has interviewed, which are like, I mean, I hate to say it, but like, no name freaking players <laughs> uh, on the tour that you haven't heard of, or of course probably for it because like, oh yeah, let's levels of playing field. Well, dude, just freaking get better. Right. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, uh, the whole the whole changes with the tour too that came out this week where they they made it a. a Changes to 2024 schedule where I don't know if you saw that or heard that much where they're no. they're the, the designated tour. So this year they came out with like, I think it's 10 designated tour events where they were high purse, um, excuse me, high purse events, um, more PJ, you know, more uh, FedEx cup points. I mean, that's why like last week, I mean, if the purse was 25 million, I mean, right. Dude, it's it's insane for PJ Tour amount. I mean, the, before twenty twenty three, I think the highest purse in twenty twenty two was, I believe, fourteen million, which was the Masters, which has always been usually one of the higher paid events mm-hmm. or the players. So they went to a twenty five million dollar purse. So now first place is making four and a half million, which is insane. And then you have guys like oh, the whole top ten is making a million plus, which used to never be the case. I mean, back in the day, like years prior, I mean, it was like. A 1.2 winning for the winner was right. huge. And yeah. then second place dropped all the way down to like 600,000. Now it's like 600,000 is placing 20th. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's insane how much money they've gotten. So what they changed though is this year they made all of the designated events required that if you were in the top 50, you had to play in those events. Which is a whole nother thing, too, because it's like the tour players made an uproar, like, oh, you can't tell me when to play and when I have to play. Mm-hmm. I remember so many people commenting, saying, like, you're the only professional sport that doesn't have a set schedule. Right. Like, do you think any of the guys on NFL have a choice? Like, eh, no, let's play on Thursday. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't want to play Sunday. It's my daughter's birthday that day. Uh, right. Can we switch that up? Yeah. Like, come on, y'all. And how much money do you guys make a year? Right. And you're going to complain about having to show up. And I get it because it's a whole week. Right. It's yeah. not like one day. But at the end of the day, like, dude, come on. I would kill to freaking be doing what you're doing and making the amount of money. Oh, well, yeah. You know? Like, come on, y'all. Um, but so then, obviously, 2024, they made the designated events not mandatory. They caved into them. But the, pro- the uproar about this change, though, is that now the designated events which are $25 million purses are only are no cut tournaments. So there's no cuts, but it's only to the top 60 or top 70 FedEx cup point players. So obviously Uh everybody who is, you know, the big chunk of players that are on the tour, but usually you just don't get close to that top 70 or top 60. Right. Are like, well, so then where do we get left in this? You know, and then obviously they're they're you know the 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 Rory McIlroy because he's on the players' advisory board mm-hmm. is like well then it, golf has always been a performance based tour right, yeah play better right. get better <laughs> like you know and they because they're all like oh well this just feeds to the elite then become elite right <laughs> like most things do yeah <laughs> correct I mean that's how it always is in all sports too right you, you always have your legends that get you right. know. Oh, he only got that call because he's freaking Tom Brady. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it happens all the time. So anyways, I don't know. I this It was just released on Monday. I know this probably, this show will get released later, but dude, it was, I've been on the phone with tons of people. Big news. Dude, it's just like, this is stupid. Yeah. It's freaking dumb. Yeah. I don't know. So we'll see what happens. There's a there's three years till right. when this proposal is supposed to take effect. And then 
it's so what that is is three years of uh, talks mm-hmm. with like the companies, the players, everyone involved. And then it's supposed to be, I believe, from 2026 to 2020 or 2034 is when it's supposed to be like implemented somehow. I don't know. It's just they're going to beta test it with a few guys. No, (laughs) like there is. There's supposed to be a whole bunch of testing. And that's why all the manufacturers are, you know, they're like, no, we want you like, you know, USJ is trying like I'm sure do they're regretting this at this point. I don't know because it's just dumb. Yeah. They're getting way more pushback than anything. Golf Channel can't stop talking about it. They can't. It's just, I believe that. It's just stupid. Well, if nothing else, they pissed Paul off. Right. <laughs> I'm not even a freaking elite yet either. Like it doesn't even affect me. But it's just, it's just dumb. I, I, I agree. I think it's just the thought of knowing, like, overreaching. Well, overreaching, but it's just like. So you're telling me that I, when we watch these events now, like I'm gonna have to, we we all just know that they're on limited ball flight right, crap. Yeah. Like that's just stupid. Yeah, I don't know. They're putting a governor on your go kart. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> like I don't. I mean, oh, but that's a good way of putting it. It's like putting a governor on the freaking NASCAR driver. Right. Yeah. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa! We, these these crashes are getting too bad, right. which is maybe understandable, but like. We're just pushing too high speeds here, y'all. Let's just back this down. Max 200. Right. You come around the straightaway. You you hear that? Like, (laughs) like, all the fun. Right. And that's what JT even said. Like, I've never heard someone comment, like, yeah, they're just hitting the ball too far. Yeah, right. This isn't fun to watch. (laughs) Like, you know, and he even made a funny joke in one of the interviews. He's like, if you guys gave me a stick and a blueberry, I'm going to figure out how to hit that blueberry as far as possible. Right. So even you making this change, it isn't going to stop us from doing what we're doing. Right. So what's what are you going to gain here? Yeah. It, I just don't see any good. I don't think a lot of people do. Like, what is this going to do for the game? Yeah. It's stupid. Anyways, I just had to pick that. Well, yeah, no. I had to drop it. Uh, just dumb. Dumb, dumb. So, Livonia. Livonia. L-Town. Uh, good old Livonia. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, born and raised in Livonia. We'll, we're we're probably getting to Devon's, born and raised city soon. Soon we'll do it next. Uh, we'll do it next week. Two weeks, which is Heartland, right? Or Highland? Highland. Highland. Yes. Well, no. Oh, well, yeah. That's where I was raised. Born in Royal Oak. Royal Oak. Yep. R O baby. That's a hot city. We could talk about that oh, one yeah. too. But uh, Livonia, so we'll go over the data like we have the last couple weeks. Sorry for that little uh, golf ramp. Just wanted to get that out there. Obviously, for everyone knows, golf is close to my heart. Yeah. We had to talk about that stupid USGA people. Those, those guys up there are dumb. <laughs> dumb. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's pull up graphic number one to start off for Livonia. The uh, the median. What do you got? Average, average sales I, price? I, I, yeah, whatever. Let's do the median sales price Ooh, for Livonia. The, median. Median. I got that one. Ta-da! There we go. All right. So, again, median means this is the very middle. Out of all sales prices, say we have 100 fit in here, right in the middle. Uh, Livonia, 263500 which is up 5.4% year over year. So that is that is a year over year number. Uh, obviously, if you're probably looking at the ends of this graph, you're like, "Well, that looks a lot more like five percent." Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I mean, guys, look at. I just I would have to say, the graph on the left is January of 2020, and we are looking at February of 2023. Look at all that equity that mm-hmm. you just gained. Right. Good lord. That's a lot. Good Lord. That is a huge amount. Look at that equity yeah. that you all just gained, whoever lives in Livonia. You were sitting at, tip. if you're a median sales price house in Livonia, you were probably hanging around a home value of $210,000. And that could be higher. That could be lower, depending on the condition of your house. But just in simply three years, your house, you have made fifty. $3,000 by not doing anything. Now, I say that with an asterisk. If you destroyed your house, <laughs> you you didn't make $53,000. <laughs> uh, 
If you didn't do anything to your house, but you kept up with maintenance and you kept it clean, then yes, you probably are figuratively number made about 50 grand in equity in your house doing nothing. Not too bad. Give thanks to COVID-19 for that. Not too bad. <laughs> that's not bad. That's a, that's a good chunk of money. I mean, that, whew, I mean, what is that even? What's that? Let's just do the number on here real quick. 210 to 263.5. Dun, dun. We will do a little math here. That is a 21% growth. That is some solid growth for you there, guys. That's that's a good chunk of money. Uh, so tip, here's one little nugget for you all who's listening to this. If you live in Livonia uh, and you did not sell your house, Pre January of 2020, you are sitting on some solid equity. So, mm-hmm. really, two things: you could be making some good money. Clearly, you've owned your house for longer than two years, so it's right. tax free now. So, all that money you're sitting on is tax free money, y'all. Uncle Sam gets nothing. Okay, no. it's your money. So, obviously, you only get that money if you sell or if you do an equity on your house. Do a HELOC equity line of credit or a home equity loan. You can pull that money out of your house. I know you're probably saying rates are high. Yeah. But uh, maybe you want to consolidate some debt. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you got some high interest rate credit cards that you're paying on uh, for probably some you, a lot of you old, you know, younger folks. Uh, you probably might have some student loans that your interest rates are pretty dang high. Maybe they're in the nine, ten percent If you can get a home equity loan for, Six, seven right now, you're saving money on interest. Right. Do it. Get get those sleazy guys off your back and have a loan that's just paying right back towards your asset uh, and not their pockets either. So um, you can do that or maybe you want to, maybe you want to do a home renovation. Right. And then that would be a good conversation for us to have to say, hey, if I pulled some money out, maybe I updated my kitchen, maybe I updated my bathroom. Uh, maybe finish the basement, maybe did some outside work, maybe build a deck, redo the deck. Uh, whatever it may be. Whatever, whatever it might be. Um, then you may not want to move, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is always the case sometimes. Right, yeah. Uh, but hey, you guys are sitting on some solid equity, okay? And uh, one thing that we want to point out, though, uh, that we're obviously what we're getting at is our year-over-year change here. Uh, like we did the last couple of shows, um, let's keep in mind interest rates rose pretty fast towards the end of 2023. If you're looking at the graph, you'll see obviously January of 2023 right there. So, you know, if you want to just go that, <laughs> my camera's there, that way, <laughs> uh, uh, you're going to be obviously in the months of December, November, October area. And then if you go up, On the graph, you will see, what do we see? They go up. And when I know, I know you're probably pointing at like, okay, well, December, there was starting to go a little like this. But Devin, is is it a lot? Or is it like just a slight, a slight decrease? Looks like a slight decrease. Yeah. Yeah. Not much. Not much. Not much. But the reason why we're doing this is because we want to show you guys the true facts you know, if you do listen to news today, it, they paint this picture like the sky is falling on real estate. Home prices are just, they're plummeting. Interest rates are high. It's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. Guys, nope, not the case. Let's go to the average, please. Let's pull up the average sales price now, uh, which is obviously this is a cumulative uh, of all of the sales prices divided by the number of homes sold to give us an average. Okay, so average sales price in Livonia, $272,261, which is up 3.3% year over year. Guys, that is good appreciation. That is very good. You know why? It's normal appreciation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's. I understand for a lot of you guys probably listening, you, you may have concerns because homes aren't doing what they've been doing the last couple of years. I got news for you. The last couple of years was not normal. 
yeah. as was not a lot of stuff that we experienced in those years, not normal. Um, so you can't really take those nat, those data, those numbers, those growth and say, well, if it's not doing this, then it's, it must be down. No, it's not down. Uh, as you can see this line graph, guys, this line graph is not lying to you like the news media maybe is uh, of trying to sell fear. Uh, we're steady. We, as you, I mean, the, what I see here is just a, a leveling out. You know, we've been saying this for a while where it's like, hey, I, these are the new home values. Same thing, like mm-hmm. these are the new prices for eggs. Well, I mean, <laughs> not not every house is like this, but I did talk to um, a buyer of mine, and they looked at a house over the weekend, and they were going to put an offer in, and there was already twenty offers in. Yeah, on a house. Uh huh. So, I I we, mean, it's still <laughs> yeah, it's we still had, going on. <laughs> we had a house in Ypsilanti. We wrote an offer on. They had seven, and we we went what. 11 over and lost. Yeah. I mean, like you said, it's not every house. Right. Yeah. It's not nope. every house, but I will tell you, uh, which I'm, I'm telling this to probably most buyers today. And they've always kind of been like this. It's not a, it's not a difference from any other market, but the homes that are move in ready, that are clean, that have been freshly painted. You've probably got an updated, somewhat updated kitchen, somewhat updated bathrooms. Uh, you know, the, you, maybe the flooring is new. You got a decent backyard and you're in a nice area. If, if you're those 90% of buyers, <laughs> right. You, you got to be prepared for this kind of market. And I think that's where a good realtor comes in and just says, Hey, you know, like I try to have very good, uh, non fear mongering <laughs> conversations <laughs> with people just to be like, Hey, this is reality. Uh, I don't want to get any hopes up that it's just going to be easy peasy to go find a house. Right. We, we're going to go up against competition. Like we are getting back to that. Uh, and for those of you who waited, I mean, I, we were saying this all on our show all the time. And if you ever talk to us or just me, uh, I was telling you now's the time to buy. And I was saying that during the, the winter, there was not many competition. You could go out there and find some great houses that didn't have a ton of offers, maybe one or two. That's not that's not it's not hard to compete when right. you only got a couple offers. But when we're getting back into your twenty or right. even seven, that, that's a that's a lot of offers to be competing with. Um, and I I mean some agents are just they're gonna get colder too. Like hey, just write your best. I already got tons, dude. Just write your best. Right. Just write your best. They they get irritated all the phone calls. Where this past winter, man, I think was probably one of the best times y'all should have bought, but you didn't listen to me. You did not listen. It was a good time. Because you know what? Agents would be like, hey, man, we'll, we'll make a deal. Just get us an offer. We'll work it out. We'll figure it out. Now it's like, hey, just. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Write your best, man. Already sitting on a couple over asking, you know, with some good terms. I mean, it's literally that kind of conversation again. <laughs> and it sucks because it's it's not fun for us either. No. We, we don't like seeing our clients getting all upset and frustrated and down because their offer, their great offer, not right, get accepted. Yeah. It's not fun for us either, guys, but I have a passion to see my clients win. That's why you see the passion I have of telling you guys, like, this is what you need to do. You got to do it. Um, so, yeah, that graph showed you uh, very well that uh, homes are homes are solid, guys. That's February data. That's recent, hardcore, factual data. Uh, there has not been a plummet in home no. prices. <laughs> As everything yeah. seems to be. Uh, let's pull up. Uh, what's the next one I gave you there? Uh, what do we got here? Uh, days on market. Sure. Let's do that one. This is another good one. That's a good one. I like talking about this one because everyone thinks that, um, you know, through these high interest rates in winter time, that homes were sitting on the market for 60, 90, 100 days. Uh, that might be the case for some homes that, A, either upon uh, a showing, uh, maybe the, the pictures did not show something, uh, you know, um, or it just is a lot of work. Here's a graph. Average days on market. Again, this is average. And I think I did a median too, didn't I? Yeah. Okay. Good, good. So average again, y'all. I always want to clarify this for our audience. Average is all 
of the home sales days on market combined divided by. So it's, it's, it's spread out. The reason why I say that, because I like the median where it's the middle. There's no outliers to mm-hmm. affect the number. But average day is 15. That's not, Fifth. That's not very long. But, but guys, let's look at this graph. If we're in such a bad market, don't you think it should be up more where it was in 2020? Johnny, I mean, you're, you're an outside guy. You're not in the business every yeah, day like I, us. Doesn't that it, show you? It don't make no damn sense. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we were in such a horrible real estate market, it should have shot up to 24, 22, 24, just like it was in, in 2020. And remind you guys, 2020... The reason why is because, hello, we weren't able to, like, do much till, like, June. Right. Halfway through that whole year, we were, we were shut down. We were called unessential. Where you want to put your head down at night doesn't matter. Nope. But as you can see, because the graph will show, uh, one of 2021 uh, is where we really began to see this decline. And I think really why is because it was just a lot of the months adding up. Uh, really to bring that number down because uh, 2021 and 2022 are just insane, uh, insane, insane. And obviously you see these just, I mean, look at those massive drop-offs. That's like, that's a good fishing hole right there. That would be. That's a good fishing It'd hole. It'd be hanging out on them banks. Uh, a walleye would be just chilling right there on those little banks, right right after the drop-off. They'd be chilling in some nice cold water right there. Ooh. Throw a little jig down there and do a little jigging. Little body beat. Fire! Oh, fish on. I got one. Fish on. Get the beer batter. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it's fish time. I don't go fishing, y'all. I go catching. Are you in Alaska? <laughs> Let's go. You you were in Alaska, right? Mm-hmm. I've never been. It's a place everyone should visit at least once. When are you going to start taking me to these places? I haven't been on the go, river I with you yet. I, I don't go there either. Why not? I don't know. I'm busy. <laughs> Come, you're not. No, we're we're doing we're, this we're, this year. We're very busy. Can in we, our house. we? We should go canoeing down here on river, and we're going to catch some fish. And we had we'll we'll not wear shirts either. Oh gosh, <laughs> <laughs> those poor souls. <laughs> I just had to say it. I'm sorry. Ain't that just going to scare the fish? Probably. <laughs> My belly! <laughs> uh, no, man. We're, we're stealth. We got, so. we got Devin Carr. This man's a legend in the in the got fish guiding world. Oh, here, here, this is what I was looking legend. for. Legend. I was busy looking for a stat. Yeah. Tell us. For every 1% drop in mortgage rates... Five million home buyers enter the market, dude. And if you can do the math correctly, it's crazy. What is that on average per state? What's five million divided by fifty? Is that five hundred thousand or fifty thousand? Fifty thousand? Hell, I don't know. I'm still working on the Dewey Decimal System. <laughs> Hundred thousand. So. Probably like overnight though, right? Yeah, because the rate dropped. Boom. So people that weren't we saw necessarily that. qualified jump in. Dude, I, I, whether it jump in, whether it made them qualified then, or if they just like the idea better of the one hundred percent, one hundred percent. And I'm telling you guys, if we, if I'm telling you right now, if you're watching this, and I hope you are, and you follow this through, and you see these stats, and they're they're very interesting because obviously this is not the stuff you're hearing. I'm telling you, it's not. I guarantee you, it's not the stuff you're hearing. Secondly, when we had those two rate drops in January and February, you felt a huge just surge mm-hmm. of interest. Phones were ringing. I know they've documented right. apps overnight just skyrocketed. Yep. And then obviously as the rates went back up, because they did, it, things cooled off, right? Because mm-hmm. like you said, people may have qualified at that low rate, and as soon as it shot up, boom, they're gone. Right. Or, you know, but here's the thing, and I've been saying this, man. There is, and this, that stat just proves it. And, and I'm saying this because I'm like giddy because I, 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 I know I was, I'm not saying I was right, but I know I'm right in this thought. <laughs> 
that there is just tons of buyers sitting on the sidelines. And the second these rates come down, they're just going to come flooding in. Mm -hmm. And you almost think, too, is does the feds know that? (laughs) And they just don't want to create another huge real estate surge. But that's the problem is like, with everything going on at these banks, I, I'm going to get off a little topic here, but it's like, you almost got to think like, dude, it's just, pfft. right. I don't know. My three scenarios, one, rates go low. The people that are now disqualified get back into the game. Boom. Yeah. There's a surge of people. Two, same thing like you said, the idea of lower rates, people come in. Boom. And then three, I think there is just going to be an increase of people and millennials this coming year. Mm-hmm that are just saying, hey, you know what? Even if they hang around six and a half, pff, I'm getting back in because it is what it is. Right. And I need to move or I need to sell. So, I mean, I just don't see, I don't know, even with another, if another bank collapses the next week or whatever, I just don't see it being a bad real estate market. Why? Because the data proves we don't have enough homes. Right. That's if, there, if there is any one of these three increase of buyers that happen i guarantee you at least one out of the three is gonna happen this year oh yeah those people group of people go into the market 2023 is going to be another great year of appreciation because you're going to have like you just said you're going to have homes that have 20 offers and like i said seven mm-hmm. what is that going to do it's going to drive the homes back up it may not be as crazy right where we're seeing fifty thousand over asking they might be on some houses but at the end of the day, it's still going to mean that we are going to be in a very competitive seller's market, y'all. And if you're not prepared, if you're not having the right conversations or asking the right questions, which we've told you numerous times on this show to do when you're talking to a realtor or when you're talking to a lender, mm-hmm. be prepared to know what this is going to look like. Because, guys, I just the writing's on the wall. It's going. It's right, going to yeah. happen. And uh, whether you like the six and a half rate mortgage payment or not, here it is, y'all. And talk to a good, because it can be fun. Because at the end of the day, am I rocked? Am I locked in on a six and a half rate, sir? If you lock it. Yeah, but am I, am <laughs> I, am I locked in it forever? No. Thank you. No. So, guys, last thing, and we'll move on to the data. If the house makes sense, if you have to move or need to move, or would like to move, and if you like to move, <laughs> and the mortgage payment at six and a half, at six nine, at six four, at six two five nine, whatever the heck the rate is, if it's good and you're comfortable and you can afford it, there's no reason for you not to start looking at real estate to do in 2023. There's no right. reason at all because guess what? Over the next, if it's a, if maybe it takes a couple of years. We don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. The feds don't even have a crystal ball, okay? And they're the ones supposedly in control of it. I don't think they are, but whatever. Um, Even if the rates go down and it takes a couple years, refi. Right. Like you've mentioned, though, before, you should be making even more money then, right? Because you're over your growth in your salary and in in wages. But if rates come down, you're going to save a lot more money because you're making more money. You can afford it. Because guess what? You could afford it today. Right. Today you can afford it. All right. I'm over that. I just sometimes get, I just get worked up when it, when you know what is right and true. I wouldn't be all this worked up if I knew I was selling you a lie. Right. Right? Well, no, I get it. I mean, shoot, I think every time the news comes on in the morning and I hear something about the housing, I always say, oh, these people. Yeah. <laughs> the big, big, and then the thing that gets me aggravated is I have conversations with people that talk to me about that. Mm-hmm. Well, but they said on Fox 2 News, you're talking to a dang reporter that has never sold or bought a house in probably 20 years. Right. What do they know? Well, they do research. Okay. And where are they getting the research from? The teleprompter. <laughs> yeah. I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> Unique New York. <laughs> Anyways, I, I just, I'm just passionate about it because I, I hear it's, uh, I think obviously... Just to shed a even a little more light on it real quick is the way that I, I know that other people process things differently than I, but for me, like I'm just a numbers guy Mm -hmm. and if it makes sense, I just do it. I don't overthink it because what happens when you overthink something, 
is analysis paralysis. You're just going to sit there and like, well, but what if this happens? But that's not today. Right. If you, if today makes sense and it's in your budget and we can find you what you're looking for in your budget, there's no reason not to go do it. Right. At all. So for those of you, yes, pull me up on the camera. I want, (laughs) (laughs) for those of you who may be an overthinker, give me a call and I will slap you in the face through the phone to stop overthinking. (laughs) It's going to be okay. I mean, the saying is 85% of the things that you worry about don't even happen anyways. That's true. So hey, it's stop. Those today. Just stop. <laughs> don't do it. It's okay. We're here for you. Trust the professionals. We do that. We talk with multiple people in different scenarios, different situations, different walks of life. And, and we, we see it all. And we, not that we know it all, but we see it all and we hear it all. And we know from a standpoint of what is good, right? Because we ask the right questions. That's why Devin's good at what he does is he, he doesn't just say, oh, yeah, here you go. Here's your, uh, let me send the pre-approval to your realtor and have fun. Good luck. Good luck. No, it's what, what are you guys looking to do? What, what, are, you, what are you paying right now? Right. How much, how much are you paying in right, right now? Oh, 1200 bucks. Is that comfortable? Could you go up? Could you go oh, up? no, go my max. I, I don't think I could afford anything more. Okay, great. So now let's work backwards. Right. Right? Like, Let's not worry about what you can be approved for. Let's worry about what you feel comfortable yes. with. Yes. And then from there, if you're comfortable, guys, I'm telling you, it makes this process all the more easier. Right? Like, I have clients right now that, you know, they are sticking to a budget. Can they afford more? 100%. But they're smart. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, they don't have to think about doing anything in that price range. They know it fits in their budget. They're completely comfortable with it, and they just go. Right. You know? So it's just that when you can get to that point, and it's you get to there by just talking to professionals like us. Talk to a good realtor. Mm-hmm. Talk to a good lender. When it comes to your money, yes, do I know? But I always say, hey, you got to talk to Devin. Like, that's mm-hmm. he's the numbers. He's the money guy. Like, just get with him. Figure that out so then we can put a game plan together. Right. And when we're all together, I think I love it like the Trinity, just like the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Like we are the Trinity of the real estate Ooh, transaction. You did that nice. You, that. you are on the top because at the end of the day, you are the ultimate decision maker. And then Devin and I, the realtor and the lender, on the bottom. We are the right. we are the Trinity. We are the triangle here. And when we're all on the same page, I'm telling you, buying and selling homes, it's fun, it's easy, and it's enjoyable, uh, and that's the way it should be. So. Let's uh let's wrap this one up cuz I know we're over an hour. Whew. Sometimes it's just it's time just flies when you're having fun. I know. Do you want to look at the month's uh supply of houses or not? Yeah, let's end on the yep. supply of houses cuz this one's going to send you out. Oh wait, no. What? Go back to the median days on market real quick. I don't think we looked at that one. No, you haven't. Holy crap. <laughs> Do you see this graph? I mean, dude, so median again is the middle. So that's, this is, this is taking out outliers. So if there's homes that were a hundred days on the market or a home that was on the market for 24 hours, obviously it's going to skew that average by a ton, but this is taking that 24 hour house and that hundred day house. And then we're picking the middle. So for Livonia, the median days on market is seven y'all. That's crazy. Seven days, one week on market. Now here's one thing I want y'all to to know about this. So here's a little funkiness to this number and even the average. If a realtor lists a house as coming soon and it doesn't go active till two, three days later, the house has already been on the market for three days. So this seven day number here isn't taking in consideration your coming soon days. Uh, so, which I'll tell you guys. Most, a lot most, of people do. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, I do on every single one of my houses. Yep. Why? Because it builds up the momentum. It stacks people up. Right. People, I mean, I can't tell you how many houses that I've listed with coming soon. I There's probably at least one to two agents. Every single house. Can we get in earlier? No, you (laughs) dummy. It's coming soon for a reason. (laughs) Well, my client's got to go on vacation, and uh, that's our problem. Right. (laughs) I'm sorry, but no, showing start Friday, bro, because that's that's my game plan. I think I've talked about on the show many times is we list it by Wednesday. We let it sit 
as coming soon to Friday afternoon. So all day Wednesday, all day Thursday, and most of Friday, it's sitting out there and nobody can step foot in the door. There's a reason why. It, obviously, coming soon was a thing the real comp did because agents would do this mm -hmm. without it actual being a real coming soon. And so agents were complaining, like, oh, well, they're, they're, you know, they're posting a listing and then I, they're blocking off the schedule till, till Friday. This is their joke. It's active. Why can't I go show it? So then they finally approved Coming What's called a, com a coming soon. Because it's true. It's good marketing. Right. Well, yeah. Post it out there. But hey, guess what? You can't see it till Friday. Right. You know? Wait till Every the weekend. Every other business does Pack, that. Packy. Oh, yeah. It's oh, right. Yeah. Everybody's coming soon. Deals, deals coming soon. Yeah. Like the new thing. Friday, Saturday, Sunday only. Come on in. 50% off. Right. Yeah. Guy Fieri's supposed to be opening up um, Chicken Guy or whatever. Yeah. April 1st. Shamrock Shakes coming soon. Everybody's out there waiting for it. Oh, I love me a shamrock. Oh. <laughs> I'm not a big mint guy, though. I'm not a huge mint. Something about the shake. I don't, I don't get too excited about that stuff. What? Yeah. I'd rather just have it's it. I, there's ice cream in it. Yeah. You I'm love like, ice cream. With Reese's peanut butter cups in it. Oh. <laughs> well, you could do a shamrock hey, with Reese's. Dairy King is open already, baby. What was it? <laughs> You're right around the block. I Your know, office. Right down the street. Shoot, man, when when I had my insurance agency in downtown Plymouth, that was bad news, Bears, dude. <laughs> I was I'm Ooh, not nice a, day. I better go get some dairy key. <laughs> like multiple times a week during the summer. It was horrible. I can't tell you how many times my family would be like, Hey, uh, you want to go to Dairy King? I'm like, fine. Just walk down there. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it was bad. But no, they're open. They opened uh I don't know, whatever, just I think this past weekend. We already went once. We went nice. on Sunday, whatever. On one of the nights, Sunday, something. Yeah, they already went. I already got my got my first Reese's peanut butter cup flurry. Ooh, there you go. From Dairy King, uh, this for twenty twenty three. I'm it's yeah, it's bad. It's bad. I really got to work out now. <laughs> just well, so yeah, I can, just golfing. So, just so I can have the ice creams. <laughs> um, but what, what was it? What were we talking about? Um, we did seven days. Oh, pull that grandpa. We didn't even talk about it real quick because these numbers were stupid low. I mean, and look at that. It, it, it's at the bottom, y'all. The bottom. Look at You go all the way back to, uh, I mean, even right during 2020, only 10 days. And not then just, very, not very long. No, but here's the thing. I, I want everyone to look at, it's been at seven since oh, February, whole year. Since February, because that, that goes just past January. So February of 2022, Livonia's median day on market has been seven days. It's crazy. So evidently, everybody wants to live in Livonia. It's a hot, it's a hot area. So yeah. Livo, yeah. So I will say, uh, for those of you who watched this whole show here, sixty-eight minutes later, Livonia was ranked, I think, in twenty twenty-one as the top top ten hottest cities in America for millennials. I believe it for millennials. It's a nice little city, just based on like sales data, right? Um. Yeah, Livonia, Livonia is just a good, it's, I mean, their, their like core, you know, statement is, you know, families first, mm -hmm. right? So they're like, they're a really good family town, obviously, like their schools are very good. Their mm -hmm. school district is rated high in the state of Michigan. So that's always a big draw for families, good schools, um, but like they they're also like southern livonia is just has always been a really good i mean if if if, the, if anyone knows livonia their livonia is known for brick ranches right they're everywhere i mean it's a central it's not central but i mean you can get to a lot of places surrounded by in, highways in a short amount of time yep so mm -hmm. you have 96 that cuts right through almost the middle of Livonia. So right. no matter where you live in Livonia, you can easily just a couple mile drive, boop, you're on 96. Right. Takes you straight to Detroit, and 96 turns into M14, it takes you right to Ann Arbor. Right. And then go north, 275, goes right on the... Farmington, Novi, I oh, mean, everything's you, right you, in that's, that little that's area. That's a huge draw. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a huge draw for all of those neighboring cities, Livonia, Plymouth, Carl's Norfolk, Canton. Carl's there. Carl's? Yeah, golf land. Oh, well, golf, golf land. Man, that's I a reason to live there, right? right thought there. you were talking about Carl's cabin. Oh, Carl's cabin that right. got on fire too. Yeah, but they're they're Did you working hear about that. Yeah, they texted you. I know. I don't know if we talked on the show though. Oh, it's yeah. been it's been horrible. 
I drive by it every day, two times a day, minimally, because that's where we go to drop Grayson off for school. <laughs> and he asked me every day, he's like, are they done yet? I'm like, dude. <laughs> You better sit tight. <laughs> it's going to probably take a couple of months, I'm sure, yep. if, if not even more. But um, this graph just shows you guys. I mean, there. If, if we were in the last six to eight months when all of this uproar with interest rates started, if we were in a bad position, we, sh- we should have saw some increase like we did in January mm-hmm. when it went up to eight. Days, one day, just one, one day yeah, more, right? One day more. It, it looks drastic, but it really is just it's one day. It's one day. That for, means that means houses that sat till Monday for a short oh, oh, amount they of just, time. They sat till Tuesday. Yeah, <laughs> for a short amount of time. So. Uh, yeah, complete debunks. And then supply. We'll throw up the real quick the supply uh, home supply uh, month supply. Sorry, months supply of homes on sale. So this is again the number of homes on the market to the number of buyers. In the market, guys, we are at, <laughs> dude, no way. That looks low. Point nine? That's what it says. <sighs> Point nine. That's crazy low. Guys. Dude, my goodness. Livonia. If you guys live in Livonia, this is maybe need the title. Like, you live in Livonia, sell your house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's nothing in Livonia, man. So that one month, that means that if all the houses sold, there would only be one month supply, and we'd be done. We'd have nothing in Livonia. And I've always said this all the time, 6.0 month supply. So on the bar graph on the left, it should say 6.0. That's when we first start even get close to a buyer's market. Guys, we're not even at one in February. I mean, the highest was like 1.5 yep. in the last three years. Dude. So, you know, a lot of people say that, and that's the thing, too. That's a lot of the, a part of all of this other discussions that we talk about. One of the biggest combinations that someone says, like, hey, great. I, I, I see everything you're talking about here, Paul. Uh, points to a really good, I should sell my house. But then where am I going? <laughs> So it's, it's, again, it's all just about putting a plan together mm-hmm. uh, and knowing how do we tackle this market for what it is to, to be strategic of finding that next house right. and how we can do it. So, and even when you have to sell before you buy, guys, for a professional, it's not hard. Don't fear it. Yeah. Do not fear it. Don't let that be your excuse. Like, well, you know, I'm really going to want it. Even if you could maybe financially buy another house before selling. Hey, and, and I would encourage you if you can, if you can do that and financially afford of it. Like obviously that's the most easiest stress free right, yeah. way to do it. Instead of making but it for most of us, cause it is the true also for most of us, you're, you want to sell to use the equity to then buy. Right. It is still very doable. Um, and guys, I can tell you one thing right now over these last few years, it has become easier why? Because it's so common. Right. I, I, so many people did over the last couple of years. It, it's just, it's not a big deal anymore uh, because well, of that. I think it's because too, I mean, like days on market. It's quick. Prime example. I mean, they're going up and then they're coming. It's not like people are waiting a to few sell. months to sell to nope. get an offer. No. Nope. Or a month, so... And I mean, that always that obviously depends, too, on the condition of your house. There's always asterisks to, to everything we're saying. You know, we got to make sure that the house is marketable. You know, it can't be a pigsty and think it's going to just sell real quick. Uh, but in these markets, they still do sell uh, because, obviously, the, the the inventory just isn't there. And and there's... Obviously, there's we got buyers. We got buyers. There's still buyers right now. And, and again, I mean, even the ones that I do have, man, it's like there isn't out there because it's true. There's not much. Right. Uh, I mean, I even just looked at the client we wrote in on for over the weekend. There was 17 houses on our search. Now there's seven. Wow. I mean, and that's, I know that for certain because I just was like, geez, Louise, that got small. Mm-hmm. That whole list got small. Right. <laughs> and and that's that's just a testament to show you guys that the homes are still moving and they're, they're cranking, baby. All right. Well, that's Livoni for you. Synopsis, real estate in Livonia is what? Thumbs up or thumbs down? I'd say down. Up. up. <laughs> <laughs> he said up. I said up. Just up. Uh, 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 uh. uh. <laughs> no, th- real estate in Livonia is up as long. So right now we're three for three. Yes, sir. Brighton's up. We're doing South good. South Line's up. Livonia's up. 
So, guys. Trifecta. Uh, Till next week, we're going to talk about Plymouth. Okay? Plymouth is next. Stay tuned for next week. I'm Paul Seguin with EXP Realty. I'm Devin Carr with Gold Star Mortgage. This is the Carr and Seguin Show. See, See you. The primary purpose of this podcast series is to inform, entertain, and educate. The information, opinions, and recommendations presented in this podcast series do not constitute legal or professional advice, opinions, or endorsements of any kind. Gold Star Mortgage Financial Group, NMLS 3446, Equal Housing Lender.